Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in the great engine game series and the crazy leader series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and what we are going to do is uh, starting a little mini series here um, demonstrating tactical episodes from Leela's games at Queen Odds. And you, the viewer, get the chance to uh, test your tactical skills against what Leela has been doing with Queen Odds. Um, in this series, I'll probably be giving a little bit more of a run up to every uh, tactical puzzle, just so that you can get a sense of what actually happened, because the um, yeah, the, the Queen Odds games are, are, are quite something somehow. And uh, I think it gives you a good bit of context to see how uh, how the situation developed. So uh, we'll be doing about uh, 12 exercises per video. And uh, well, I've just got a, a wealth of material. It is simply unbelievable. Most of the exercises, by the way, will be quite simple. There'll be a few mating ones, uh, just to illustrate how many unusual mated ones Leela finds with uh, this material. Um, shouldn't be too challenging, um, but should be a lot of fun. So let's have a go. So this was a game uh, played against a, a 2400 uh, Lee chess player. Um, and Leela has uh, already damaged the uh, black kingside structure and Leela started chasing the king. So king f6, knight d5 check, and black went all the way with king g5. Um, so um, now f4 check was played by Leela, and uh, white and black replied rather with e takes f4. So now I'm just going to pause for a little moment. You can pause the video and you can work out how did Leela deliver mate here. Well, the answer's very nice indeed. Not 100% obvious to find. A, re a knight retreat, always difficult to spot, knight check. Uh, the king can't go back to f6, it's covered, has to go to h5, and then knight f4 check wins. In case you're wondering, after f4, uh, king h5 was the best, but that's uh, mate in 12 or 13, according to Torch, starting with the move h3, getting rid of the knight and preparing to, uh, to move the bishop to, uh, to e2. The next game. Ooh, this is a nice one. So um, this is against a 2900 player uh, who played a lot of games at uh, bullet one minute. The, the one minute challenge, as I'm calling it. Um, so Leela as white played the move bishop c4, vaguely teeing up uh, some um, some awkward things there. And um, um, yeah, here uh, black played uh, the move b5 to chase away the knight. And Leela threw in a knight e7 check. Now, for some reason, black didn't play knight takes e7, which would have been incredibly sensible, I have to say, um, but instead played the move king h8. I think must just have missed knight e7. And um, um, in this position, Leela took on f7. And there's a little threat of knight takes g6 check now. So black played knight takes e7. How did Leela finish this off? Well, it's one uh, tactic that we're going to see a lot of uh, in these series. You know, Leela, one thing that you learn from, um, from uh, these uh, Queen Odds games is that Leela can do lots of good things on the h-file. And this is the win, rook h7, king h7, rook h1. The um, um, the king is uh, blocked in by its own pawns, and of course rook h4, rook h4 is checkmate, so uh, the opponent resigned. Ooh, so um, this one here, um, this has not gone well for black, of course, you know, um, I think you can see um, still a queen for a rook up, but um, um, a lot has happened. And after Leela's bishop g7, uh, there's a big threat, well, of forking the queen with knight f6 and also just of taking the pawn on h7 and queening the h pawn. So um, um, unfortunately, black chose probably the, the very worst option here, which was to play the move knight e7. Can you see how Leela finished off? The finish was very nice. It was knight f6 check, king d8, and knight f7 checkmate. There's lots of checkmates like this from uh, from Leela. Quite amazing. Ooh, this one as well. 
I mean, what you often see is that, you know, black players do really well up to a point and uh, somehow, somehow it just all suddenly falls apart. So um, here black's um, fighting. Um, OK, lost two pieces uh, along the way, but still fighting. But Leela starts creating threats here. So um, uh, gives a little check on B6 and black really should have retreated to B8, though it feels uh, very uncomfortable to um, uh, to um, uh, to move the king to the back rank. But King D6 was played, and now Leela played the move Bishop C5 check, and uh, Black thought, well, I'm not going to give up my queen after King C7, certainly not, so took on C5. And now, can you spot how Leela finished off the game for White? Yeah, this is actually force mate. It's it's barely believable in actual fact. But Leela's got this way of making uh, suddenly making its pieces. The rook on b2 look completely passive. Yeah, it turns into an absolute monster now. King c7, rook b7 check. And um, uh, there's two nice mates. King c8, I go knight b6. King d8, rook b8 check. King c7 and rook c8 checkmate. Uh, the other one is uh, one move quicker but still always the checkmate on c8. Lovely little checkmate there, and coming out of nowhere there. Oh dear, this one. Yeah, I mean, you see a lot of games where black seems to have escaped, and then all of a sudden the danger strikes again. You know, it just uh, it just never ends, basically. Um, here black's done pretty well, really. I mean, um, um, got out of the, uh, got everything, uh, got past everything, really. Still a piece up. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, you, you feel should uh, be able to gradually unravel. Um, here, however, black played the move king d8, trying to bring the king over to e8 and play rook f7. What did Leela play? Yeah, that's the move, rook d6, and suddenly the knight is lost, and on top of that, the white rooks are on the seventh rank. Uh, black did not last long, check and even allowed uh, mate there with rook g e7. Really, ah, uh, oh, right, tragic end there to uh, to black. But uh, yeah, Leela just has always has danger in its head. This is another good example here. I mean, uh, black here is um, um, still the queen up and has actually picked up three extra pawns and, and seems to be doing quite well. Um, Leela innocently hit the rook on d2 there and uh, black played the rook back to d5. What did Leela play now? Well, the thing you've got to do is you've always got to watch Leela's knights. I do have to say that uh, if one thing's clear about um, um, about uh, human players from these games of Leela's is that they are very bad at spotting knight forks um, and knight clay. Uh, because it's it's rampant all over the place in uh, in these um, in these queen odds games, quite striking in actual fact. Here, Leela finished off with knight c6, king a8, and knight b6 checkmate. Another double knight checkmate. That's a really lovely one, actually. Yeah, this is an interesting episode. Um, it's the sort of thing where you sort of say, well, I mean, uh, you know, black seems to have survived OK, a rook up uh, for a couple of pawns, but, you know, should be uh, on the way to a win here. And yet somehow out of nowhere, Leela just starts conjuring uh, dangerous threats. So black played the move knight g6 and um, uh, just trying to stop um, white from playing f4 to f5 by attacking the pawn on e5. And Leela just gives a pawn away. So black takes it. And now rook um, h1. And all of a sudden you realise, ooh, 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 that's a little bit nasty. And if the knight goes back to g6, then rook h7, and the king has to go back to the back rank, which is not what you want. So black takes the rather risky decision to go um, knight g2. And uh, black goes rook g6, white goes rook g6 check. And black takes the opportunity, though, to at least not put the, um, uh, the king on the back rank. How did Leela respond? Well, one of the uh, things that you notice from these uh, Queen Odds games is that often when things go wrong for you, it's not just a little bit wrong. Uh, with Against Leela, it's going horribly wrong. And here, Black had missed the move Bishop F5 with a, a really beautiful checkmate. Oh, this is another another little tragedy here. So um, 
Um, well, Leela, it's queen odds, but Leela has a queen because Leela had managed to queen, but um, at the cost of a rook and Black's uh, um, playing at a good time control, five minute plus three and seems to be making it. Um, only it's um, um, not particularly easy um, to make uh, progress, but um, if we give a check on d6, the king will come to c3 and escape. So Leela plays queen c7, just um, sort of stopping the king from um, uh, from going to c3. So what uh, black does, black plays the move rook e5, giving the king an escape route, king e4 to f5. How did Leela respond? Yeah, I'm afraid uh, that uh, that rook e5 actually just uh, blocked the, all the escape routes of the king and queen c4 check was checkmate. Yeah, always danger, every moment of the game from, uh, from Leela. Oh, yeah, this is a very interesting one. So this is a very typical scenario that you see in uh, these games, you know, where um, um, Leela's gradually recovering material. But obviously it's been uh, sacrificing pawns, you know, along the way to uh, to create uh, play. So, you know, coming back to an equal in general, equal material position, but a couple of pawns down, as in this case, very, very typical for uh, for Leela at these, uh, you know, queen odds uh, games. Um, but Leela just keeps on attacking. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about it. Somehow Leela manages to uh, to keep on having active pieces, however many it's uh, using to take back material. And here Leela starts harassing the rook on uh, on b8, rook b7 played, rook a8 check, king d7, and bishop f8. And I mean, it doesn't look so bad for black. Just a little bit uncomfortable with uh, you know open files and all that. But it doesn't look like you should be. Uh, in any big trouble here. So um, black played the very sensible looking move rook c3 here, just looking to take the pawn on c4. Once you get the pawn on c4, you put a knight on d5 and you've won. How did Leela play in this position? So Leela played the move rook d1 and um, the first thing that you notice is king e6, there's uh, rook d6 checkmate. So um, black played the move king c7, and now bishop d6, and um, well, you realize that you can't go back to d7 because after bishop e5 check, we're actually, um, well, we're attacking the rook. We can go knight d5 check for white, but yeah, obviously you don't particularly want to give your knight back like that. Been a bit unfortunate putting the um, uh, the rook on the, on the dark square there, but okay, we'll move to, to b6 and just get out of the way and take on c4 check next time. But no, um, actually rook b1 check is absolutely killing all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the black king is caught in a mating net, the bishop stopping the king from escaping. And what you very often see, what Leela does so well, the king blocked by some of its own pieces, this case the pawn on c6, and all black crosses rook b3 again, and then rook b3 checkmate. Yeah, one of those uh, mating attacks that comes out of the blue in, uh, at queen odds. This is another tragic one. This black player had a lot to endure, I have to say. So um, Black's um, given um, uh, a check there and uh, Leela just replied with Rook D2. And it's um, a little bit irritating for um, uh, for Black because, um, yeah, obviously the Knight on D5 is uh, caught. It's not going to be easy to win with Queen uh, against two Rooks. So what Black thought is, well, what I'll do, I'll just pin that Pawn on C4 to the Rook on A4 and then you can't take on D5. And well, with Queen and uh, and three Pawns eventually against uh, two Rooks, you know, surely that's going to be great. But how did Leela respond? Yeah, that, that's not a pin on the uh, Pawn on C4 because White's got the opportunity to play the move C5, opening up a Rook H. The, the line of the rook on the on, on the queen with tempo and after king c5 rook h4 yeah white's completely winning with two rooks against a knight and three pawns ah oh dear that's a really a really nasty one that one yeah another typical scenario here um you look at this position and you think wow black's done pretty well there okay lost the queen but you've got a rook for it and you're just uh, just a question of mopping up the um, uh, the white pawns here. C pawn for white, little bit dangerous, but um, I'm sure we can uh, we can cope with that one. Um, so black played the move bishop d6, e takes d6 played, and then took this one. But now c6, and this is looking a little bit worrying. So black decided to to play it nice and safe and played rook c4, c7, rook c8. And the idea is that you're you're ready to sacrifice your rook for both those pawns. Okay, you might lose your a6 pawn, 
but um, it'll be okay. You know, you'll have Rook and 4 versus Rook and 3. At least you're not going to lose it, right? But how did Leela play here? Yeah, it's what I said before. We you know the thing about Leela is that when it, it goes a little bit wrong, it's it's never it's never a bit. It's always absolutely huge. And actually, this move Rook B two completely wins for um, for uh, uh, White. Uh, Rook B eight is coming in, and um, you can't just take off the pawn there because Rook B eight is checkmate. And um, if you go King F eight, then simply Rook B eight, and uh, Rook takes C seven. I just take back on C seven. And yeah, either you take the rook and I queen, or I just take your rook. Black is completely lost. And now the final um, video for uh, this uh, um, for this uh, episode. Yeah, this is one of those positions. Um, again, black very strong player, nearly 20, 2,900, doing the one minute challenge. And um, yeah, he's done really well. I mean, um, OK, you know, uh, lost um, a rook in principle, but um, got to a position where it's starting to feel a little bit safe and time now just to, to start trying to um, uh, to get things moving. A uh, little bit of a problem uh, getting rid of that D pawn, but let's start by attacking it. How did Leela play? Yeah, this move is um, unfortunately really, really wrong because Leela played the move rook takes f7. And um, yeah, the problem is that queen f7, there's d7. Uh, Black actually resigned here. I think, yeah, he was getting short of time. And yeah, of course, he's not going to be able to to to, uh, to play this one uh, quickly enough. It's a good rook ending for white, although it might not be winning with best play. But as I said, you know, the uh, the real tragedy is that it's it's never just, um, oh, I've lost a pawn, but OK, I can still survive with something like queen d8 because you just played d7 and you're either threatening uh, um, uh, rook f8 check or rook e7 to e8. Uh, but for example, if black plays rook e6, I just go rook f8, queen f8, d8, queen, and uh, we're into that same uh, pawn down rook ending that's going to be very hard to hold against Lila. So, uh, yeah, black resigned in this position. So there we are. That was the, the first video in this series. I've got lots more. I hope you're going to enjoy these. I had a great time looking through them and uh, yeah, lots of patterns, lots of tactical insights, not too difficult. But obviously, if you're thinking about trying to uh, look at these as speed, obviously high speed for um, for the for the, for the uh, strongest 2900, 3000 players normally playing at one minute. But yeah, you know, the, the, the 2100, 2200, 2400 players normally playing at five plus three or even 15 plus 10. You know, again, you know, everyone's having problems spotting these tactics quickly in all these different guises and uh, at all these different moments. So really good practice, I think, to uh, to go through this. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying it. Give a like and subscribe if you do and hope to see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.